Hey everybody, this is Ed from the Whiskey Tangent Podcast here with another Whiskey Short. And joining me as always is Scott. Hey everybody. And a special guest today is our old friend, the knight who says neat, <laughs> Jeff. Hey, and I'm back. All right. Space, the final frontier. This is the Chronicles of the Whiskey Tangent Podcast <laughs> on a journey to find new and interesting life in whiskey throughout the galaxy. And tonight, <laughs> we visit the ever-elusive, ever-reclusive Romulans. <laughs> That's right. Scott, tell everybody what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah, so um, on the December news, we mentioned that a new whiskey that was coming out in December was the Romulan Ale Rye. And I just thought it was kind of cool because the bottle is really neat and it's blue. For people at home, this looks honestly like the icy frozen pop you'd have as a kid. Yeah. There were blue raspberry. It's yeah. that blue. Then, a couple weeks later, Craig Spurrier, who's the chief innovation officer and partner of Wines That Rock, uh, one of their subsidiaries is Star Trek Spirits, Mm -hmm. and he was actually a listener of ours, said he really likes what we do, and he thanked us for mentioning it on the podcast, and he wanted to send us a bottle. And we'll be talking to him later to get the full story, but for now, this is the Star Trek Spirits Romlin Ale Rye Quick Taste. (laughs) Bonus show. So I cobbled together from the back of the bottle and from their website, a four paragraph description of this product, and then we'll get to taste it. From its first appearance in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, Romulan Ale Rye has been legendary throughout the galaxy. Well known as a highly potent beverage of Romulan origin with its characteristic crystal blue color, the libation was declared illegal by the Federation in (laughs) early 2280. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Even as the Federation attempted to abolish it, Romulan Ale has remained a popular and sought after spirit, not only standing the test of time, but also improving with it. However, the Romulan Ale Rye was designed from start to finish to be exceptional, and its roots are deep in history and technology. First, we started with an ultra-premium rye whiskey that had been fermented with a 150-year-old yeast strain, giving it a deep sweetness and flavor complexity after aging in new charred white oak barrels. Mm. But then we took it a step further. In collaboration with a world-renowned food scientist, we'd opted to perform an additional vacuum distilling process, which operates at lower temperatures, enhancing both flavor and aromatics, and creates an ultra-smooth finish even at high proof levels. We'd like to think that distillation in the future will also be performed in similar low-pressure environments, and as it turns out, distilling in a vacuum happens to make a great whiskey. Mm. From concept to cork, bringing you this classic part of Star Trek history alive has been an amazing journey. We hope you enjoy the end results as much as we enjoyed putting it all together, live long, and prosper. Yeah, think about the future in this. What happens when you beam the whiskey out to another barrel and then beam it back to your <laughs> barrel, right? What happens in the beaming process, right? Or even more annoying, we'll put it on a starship and let it go through the galaxy like the uh, Jefferson Ocean does, right? <laughs> yeah, I like that, the beaming process. Right. Are you going to beam Suntory up to the <laughs> ship? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think you're going to get a free bottle from Jefferson's now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is a rye whiskey. Um, I think they can still call it a rye whiskey. However, there's Romulan writing on the front, so we don't know what they actually call it. I don't know how they got that past the TTB. <laughs> so it actually has honey. Oh. It says on the bottle, it has honey and FD&C blue number one. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> obvious. <laughs> the proof is 100, which is pretty mm-hmm. good. Uh, the mash bill is 95.5, uh, so it's probably from MGP. Mm-hmm. No age statement, but it's at least two years. Uh, the price is $85. Okay, it's a very interesting bottle, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, first of all, it's a great move on their part just because of the millions of Trekkies out there who just would love a novelty gift. Yeah. Like, I'd spend $85 just to give this to a real hardcore Trekkie right. friend. Yeah, so. I'd, I'd buy it for Jeff. Birthday, March 7th, by the way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's well, you, right. Maybe you can take the rest of the bottle home. <laughs> <laughs> I sent Jeff a picture of it, and he said, oh, my God, it looks exactly like the bottle in The Wrath of Khan. And he sent me back a picture it of does. it with Captain Kirk holding it. And it, yeah, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. I could ruin your podcast because I can quote that movie <laughs> from <laughs> start to finish. Yeah, I don't know if it's ruining it. I would say it's yeah. enhancing it. So let's uh, see what we get in the news. Yeah. Oh, I mean, traditional... Smells like a rye. Yeah, really rye notes on, you know... Very strongly rye. Yeah, strongly rye. You know, I'm going to try to taste it with my eyes closed because when I look at it, I'm anticipating blue raspberry yeah, I am. Oh. I am. I'm, I'm, or, or blueberry uh, right. yeah isn't that funny i mean it's so blue it's really strange yeah i want to be so drunk tomorrow that my tongue is blue like what what, what were you doing last night <laughs> hey making into, out with an andoran <laughs> got, got into some uh, romulan rye 
Are you getting any honey on this? Because it says there's honey in it, oh, but I don't really smell it. And there's some sweetness. We're going to taste it right now. There's a sweetness, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's got a very sweet burst on the palate, and then it gets really... Really spicy, spicy on the tongue. On the tongue yeah. Oh, wow. That's really neat. Uh, I taste uh, like cinnamon. What's the heat on this? The, hundred. Yeah. The, oh yeah. It does, yeah. It brings. Yeah. It definitely comes a little bit, but not overpowering. But it definitely all the way there. The honey is up front, and then it does settle into like a peppery. Thing. Yeah, I'm getting like like those little red hot hearts candies that yeah. you used to get around Valentine's Day. I hated I, those. You don't like those? No. But I like this. Yeah. Are you getting that much cinnamon? I'm not getting that much cinnamon. I, I am. I don't, I don't know. Let me try it again. It's the sweetness that's transitioning into the pepper, and I think it's all combining in my head as a cinnamon, red hot cinnamon flavor. I could almost see like a raw cinnamon oil. Okay. Like I mentioned a few other podcasts yeah, last, back. Last week. So strong. Yeah. It almost burned your lip. It's yeah, that's like, kind of what I'm getting. <laughs> yeah, it was really a strong cinnamon oil. But to me, they're separate. There's sweet honey, and then I get that strong peppery. It is. It's a very immediate yeah. sweetness, yeah. and then strong and pepperiness. The transition from sweetness into spice is uh, it just flows. It's very nice. I'm surprised. I, I really like this. Yeah, yeah. I like this a lot. It's got a little bit of fire to it. It I does. I'm going to put a little water in it. That's what I'm going to do. Let's yeah, like when I was saw it, it was 100 proof. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're aiming for something legit here. They're not yeah. trying to proof it down yeah, to just like 80. 85 or something. Not lame. Like, like it definitely takes it from being a novelty whiskey to being a novelty whiskey that's a whiskey. You know, I think that's important. If you swish it around in your mouth and let it hit the roof of your mouth, Ooh. that's when I get through the honey and, okay. and breathe through your nose. And I mean, you're, you're really being bossy right now. Stand on one foot and <laughs> approach the neutral zone. <laughs> oh, my God. Star Trek jokes. <laughs> they terrible. Well, at least no one has made a joke about Klingons around Uranus yet. <laughs> you just did, sir. <laughs> Congratulations. Meanwhile, the Romulan and Rye guy is like, just get through the episode without being too inappropriate. Right. <laughs> Something we can share with our friends. Exactly. Just get, it's nice and easy. Talk about uh, the blue, weird blue color and let's get out without any L's. <laughs> All right. So I did what Jeff suggested. And it's just so strong when you do that. And I got like grass at the end. Grass at the oh, end. Oh, wow. wow. You're tasting awesome things in here. Like when you breathe through your nose, I got oh, I see what you're scent of grass. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's very mm-hmm. earthy. Mm-hmm. Surprising. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it certainly has a, a novelty appeal because there's nothing else like it in the marketplace. Yeah. But I haven't drank a lot of whiskeys that taste exactly like this. The mix of honey and I was getting some black pepper and traditional spices like that. Yeah, black but pepper, definitely. I think I want another splash. Can I have the bottle? Sure, sure. Yeah. A little bit more of this. <laughs> Be me to buzz land. You're, you are going to have a blue tongue. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I was going to say, check my tongue. It's a little blue. Here's a little blue. Yeah. Can we all just say, be me up, Scotty, just once? <laughs> <laughs> I used to get that yep. so often. Be me up, Scotty. Oh, my God. People. <laughs> yep. There was one guy where I used, to, I used to work in a warehouse for a summer, and the guy was uh-huh. every day, be me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just funny. Sounds like he was coming on to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe yep. he was. Back in the storeroom, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so I have their tasting notes, because I wasn't able to find anybody who did a professional review of this. So we're the first. <laughs> the first we are the uh, pinnacle if you want to know about rhyming the right come to our first us. review okay so and it's just a paragraph they didn't really separate it out from nose palate and finish but the rye graininess is apparent in the nose and the intentional taste on the tongue then comes the sweet brown note of vanilla creaminess and sweetness it has the spicy peppery notes that all high rye whiskeys are known for in the finish but ours is tempered with dried fig raisin and a cherry fruitness mm. Mm. interesting i do get some dark fruits on the finish mm-hmm. fig is interesting I can definitely see fig. Yeah. We have a fig tree. I can see it. No mention of the earthiness that we got. What did we eat the other day that had figs in it? Remember? We were talking about how figgy it was. Was it that the field ride? Wait. Oh, it's a boss hog. That's yeah, yeah. A, the boss hog's finished in the... Uh, yeah, uh, it's finished in uh, fig liqueur barrels or something. Yeah, something forget, like that. Yeah. Really interesting. Right. So yeah. the boss hog nine that just came out had a fig finish. That's right. Yeah. And for that... We could have like eight bottles of this, <laughs> which I might rather have maybe. <laughs> yeah. If, if we had eight bottles of this, my tongue would stay blue. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. You, your wife would catch you too. Were you drinking today? Nah. Stick your tongue out. You <laughs> lying bastard. <laughs> you drank that ramen ale. You drank that ramen ale again. Look at your tongue. <laughs> Don't you know that's illegal? Why is the car in the front lawn? <laughs> <laughs> well, why isn't our Orion chick in our bathroom? Right. <laughs> Uh, so they do have cocktails, so I'll, oh. I'll show you the cocktails that they have that they make with this. That- Anders is going to be so jealous because he's a Trekkie, too. I hope they're named like Shatner Surprise and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, one of them's named Andorian Old Fashioned. 
Nice. So they have these um, Enokitaki mushrooms, where the, the thin ones that kind of look like Andorian yeah. antennas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's two ounces of the Romulan rye, a quarter ounce of simple syrup, and two dashes of Angostura bitters, mm. which That'd we actually good. have. That'd we, be good. we could make it if you guys want to. And then the next one is the Orion Syndicate, which is green colored. It's one ounce of Romulan rye, one ounce of a vanilla liqueur, a half ounce of Remy Martin cognac, an ounce of fresh lime juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, and four large mint leaves muddled. I mean, that's kind of like halfway to a sidecar, and then it takes a, a side turn. Yeah, yeah. So you want to make the Andorran Old Fashioned? I think yeah. we take should. A quick make, break? Yeah, Andorran Old Fashioned it is. All right. We'll be right back. back i've made the andorian old-fashioned yeah uh, once again it's two ounces of the romulan rye a quarter ounce of simple syrup and two dashes of orange angostura bitters thank, i don't I have wanna, the mushrooms yeah, i want to thank them for asking us to try romulan rye today we've tried about half a bottle so far i know it's funny how it just <laughs> well dissipates. we're halfway done we have to finish this cocktail first oh well, the top is tapered in a cone shape so we didn't we're not halfway i know i'm exaggerating i know that's what you do. Thanks for being so exact. Sorry. <laughs> Bill Nye over there, the science guy. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm missing it. Spock over there being yeah, all logical. Uh, there we go. Oh, I mean, uh, this is good. It's an old-fashioned. Oh, but the rye really gives it a punch. Yeah. See, the one problem I have with old-fashions is they tend to get washed out by the sweetness. This being 100 proof. Yeah. Holds it, up it, to it. it holds up to the simple uh, syrup really good. And I think the bitters also are helping. Yeah, you definitely taste the orange in the bitters. Yeah. And that's one reason I don't really drink old fashions is they're just really too sweet for me. Mm-hmm. And wow. the, the orange bitters with the blue of the liquid is just, I mean, it's something you don't expect to taste orange. Yeah, yeah. Right. I know. Right, cool. Again, we're getting thrown off by the color. Good, though. It's the, in a good way. Yeah, yeah the good. recipe did nothing to diminish the blue. Mm-mm. All right, so one of the reasons why we wanted to have Jeff on this episode is because of his insane recollection of star wars just tonight star trek star trek yeah what did i say star wars god damn it jesus christ i know so sorry you have failed me for the last time (laughs) though he is pretty knowledgeable in star wars also that's true it's not a misstatement it's just not relevant to this not relevant so just tonight we were sitting there talking before ed got here and he started humming the the romulan theme so i was like oh oh i have to hear that so i got on my phone and i started playing the romulan theme and like three seconds he's like oh no that's the next generation not the original series i'm like oh my god how did you know that (laughs) oh also the one thing that i remember when we were kids i would go over jeff's house and we would watch just reruns of star trek because even when we were kids it was still reruns because the original series was in the 60s like before we were born or like around the time not that old yeah. yeah and he said that he could tell which episode it was by the planet in the first four seconds that the ship was revolving around <laughs> i watch a lot of stuff like <laughs> and, and he and damn if he didn't do it <laughs> that information gets you laid a lot in high school by the way <laughs> does it <laughs> <laughs> you know um i think we should do a quick toast here and now we're talking about it okay we're talking about star trek and it's been black history month as well michelle nichols died yeah just right. recently just recently yep. L- lieutenant ahora yeah right. who it's crazy to think her character was groundbreaking that she was a military officer mm-hmm. and portrayed as an equal member of the crew yeah. at a time when the civil rights movement was going on and there's a story where she wanted to leave the show and pursue broadway and martin luther king told her that she couldn't leave the show she right. was too important for the cause on that show Oh, interesting. Luckily for her, the show was canceled rather quickly. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then she go to other things. But of course, she came back to the franchise in the movie. Yeah, she did. And she was the, a beautiful woman, too. She was. Uh, very talented. Yeah. So hats off to Nichelle Nichols, who was a legitimate trailblazer on a show about trailblazers. I know. The, the whole bridge, the whole point of the show was yeah. to say, hey, we're 200 years in the future, or right. however many years it was. Look how far we've come as a society. We, right. have, a, we have a black woman on the bridge. Right. We have a, an Asian man on the on the bridge. A Russian, which we were And a enemies, Russian. Which was yes. our enemy at the time. Which Absolutely. I think that was really the most cutting edge. You know, like in the future, all the dumb shit that we're arguing about isn't yeah. going to matter. Right. And we all learned that really the only one you had to be afraid of 
was the Romulans. And I really thought the Romulans were kind of the Soviets in that they were the ones that were like the neutral zone was the Cold War. Yeah. Like, you stay there, we'll stay here, mm-hmm. we don't trust you. Klingons or, too, though, right? Uh, the Klingons were, they were like the Koreans almost. You know, not like North Korea now, but how North Korea was in the 60s. Yeah. Was it the 24th parallel or something? I can't, my, my, yeah, I can't my remember. My dad would be so mad he spent a year in Korea and I can't remember. Mm-hmm. The um, the DMZ, for example. Well, that was the neutral zone. Right. That was, so maybe the Koreans were like the Romulans and the Klingons were like the Soviets. Well, nerd alert. Later on yeah. with, with the movies, they tended to portray the Klingons more as the Soviets. Okay. Because when the Berlin Wall came down, right. there was a movie where the Klingon Empire was totally decimated and oh. they had to sue for peace with the Federation. Interesting. Right. And just like the Soviets sued for peace with America in right. the West. Yeah. So that it paralleled right. politics in that way, which was pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. So yeah, when I was a kid and the Romulans showed up, I just knew that it was about to get real. Yeah. They, they shot that little like photon torpedo thing, way more powerful than our photon torpedoes yeah. were. And yeah, they had an energy weapon or yeah, something. Yeah, it was yeah. like... Um, I Jeff know. knows exactly what it is. Yeah. What's it called? I do. Oh, he's, just letting me, he's just letting me struggle. <laughs> what is it called, Jeff? It was like a giant plasma. Oh, um, it's exactly... Right. Yes, right. Plasma gun. Oh, right. It wasn't That's a fortune. Right. It wasn't a photon torpedo and it wasn't a phaser. It was something plasma, else. Plasma, yeah. Right, right. Plasma ray or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, it was not a ray. It was, it was not a ray. It was a burst or something. It was a gun a burst? Ed, are you looking it up? Yeah, I'm seeing if I can get it. That was a cool episode because the Enterprise was chasing the Romulans who could cloak and go and be invisible. Yeah. And it was like an, almost like a World War II corollary. Yeah. Uh, like a destroyer trying to... Like a U-boat. It is. Chase a, the U-boat. Yeah. It's called the Romulan Plaza Array. Plasma Array. Yes. Oh, see, I was close. Yeah. I called it Ray, not Array. That's right. So you're <laughs> uh, wrong. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to set up our Zoom call with Craig Spurrier yeah. and their resident mixologist, Brian Van Flandern, to talk about all things Romlin Rye. Brian. Hello, how are you? Good, how are hey, you? How are you? Oh, that's great. Great, good comment. Hey, yeah. Craig, how you doing? Fantastic. We're so psyched. I mean, we all grew up as a big fans of Star Trek. Yeah. Oh, okay. good. Yeah, so yeah. how did you guys get involved with them? So we have the license to do okay. wines and spirits. So just to give you some background, I'm a partner in a group called Wines That Rock, and we just started a new company called Spirits That Rock. So we've been doing wine for about 15 years now. We do celebrity and lifestyle brands, and then we've been building our own portfolio as well. So we've been creating wines for the Rolling Stones, uh, the Police, the Bachelor, Hallmark Channel, Turner Classic Movies. And then Star Trek came around four years ago on the relaunch of Picard. And there is an actual Chateau Picard in Bordeaux, France. And they've spent about five years trying to get the Picard's label on the wine that they produce. They wouldn't have it. And then it took us about a year to convince them that, hey, this is not going to degrade your brand. This is going to enhance it. So we've been producing two varietals every year since that on the wine side. And then there was a hiccup with James T. Kirk Bourbon two years ago. And then Paramount came over and said, hey, would you want to take over the spirits license? Oh, okay. Because I did know about the James T. Kirk Bergman, and I wondered if you guys were affiliated with them, but I guess... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, in fact, I noticed you weren't, and then I was really confused. I'm like, how many people are putting out stuff for Star Trek? That seems crazy that there's different companies. So now... Right. 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 So there was a group called Silver Screen Beverage Company, and they produced the 10 Forward Vodka, and they also produced like a scotch for Scotty, but they weren't doing very well with that in Paramount's eyes, and they pulled that license and gave it to us. 
I see. We're currently the sole spirits and wine group with Paramount. Right. So you guys already had a company that was attractive to them. Yeah. That, that makes sense. I'm trying to figure out how do you approach them and be like, we want to make whiskey for you, but now I understand a lot better. Right. Our corporate culture is that we're going to produce the best product we can. And that's the bespoke bottles we have, making sure that everything is authentic, true to the brand, and then going into the, the juice itself, as well as bringing on Brian, who's a world-renowned mixologist. He's got a Michelin three-star background and he's worked on Bar Rescue, worked with Barefoot Contessa. So Brian takes our product and he does his magic and makes these wonderful cocktails, as well as he helps us and guides us to the flavor profile of the spirit as well. Yeah, I can see all the bottles behind him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we did make, I guess, one of his cocktails on the episode. Yeah, we made the Andorian old-fashioned. It was fun. Yeah. Did you get the mushrooms? No, we no, didn't get, we the, didn't get the mushrooms. Really. Yeah, cause it's, it's a really good idea. It made us laugh out loud. I love the mushrooms. so brilliant. But it was delicious, no doubt. Good. It's a really fun product to work with. And I was formerly the uh, head of education for Southern Glazers Wine and Spirits, the largest liquor distributor in the United States. So I have a nerdy background. I lecture on not just whiskeys of the world, bourbon, rye, single malts uh, in America, Canadian, Irish, Scottish, Japanese, and now, of course, mm-hmm. Taiwan, India, Belgium, Tanzania. Uh, they're all getting in on the whiskey game. And so I'm a Star Trek fan. I went out to a Star Trek convention right here in Las Vegas, and I met Craig and, uh, and his partner, Howard, and we sat down and tasted through all their product. And I gave them my card and didn't think much about it until about a year later, they reached out to me and said, hey, look, we're ready to launch the Romulan Ale. And I knew the master distiller who helped produce it, and I was got very excited about the product. But the color lends itself to making some extremely cool cocktails. But for those of us who are whiskey nerds, make no mistake about it, the quality of the liquid is next level. And I'm happy to talk about why. It sets apart from most of the other guys. Yeah, I mean, it's like blue carousel with a punch in the gut. You know, it comes it comes <laughs> pretty nice. It's like so you can make beautiful cocktails, which actually have some. Yeah, yeah. we really enjoyed the whiskey, uh, and we really appreciated the fact that it was proofed at a hundred because a lot of these, you know, tie-in whiskeys oh, and stuff are like 80, 86 or something, and, and and they end up kind of tasting a little weak. But this was not weak at all. Like it had a lot of flavor to it. We're, we're open-minded, but we certainly didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. I'll be dead honest with you. I thought it was. Going going to be a novelty product that was going to be oh that's, that's not bad you can drink it i had the same visceral reaction the first time i tasted it because i was exactly like you i thought okay this is a novelty product for a very niche group is this gonna sell and then are they just putting some cheap spirit but what makes it extraordinary we're using 100 percent mgp rye they blend in five percent malted barley Right. Yeah, so we're very familiar with that match bill. That in and of itself, that makes it good quality, but it doesn't make it extraordinary. And so we've got this great base to start with. It's two years age, but we worked with a world-renowned food scientist, Larry Wu. He developed a very scientific, natural way of maturing wines and or distillates. We didn't want a lot of aging on this because the longer it ages, the more color extraction you're going to get. The darker brown it is mixed with the blue is just going to look horrible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, no, exactly. So after we get this great base from uh, MGP, we went ahead and took that and then distilled it again in a vacuum distillation in the cold vacuum of space. (laughs) But by using vacuum distillation, not only we're removing additional impurities, but we're retaining the aromatics and a lot of the flavor from that rye and from the malted barley. And then, because he's a master blender, we're adding in just a touch of honey, and that just rounds it out. Yeah. Yeah. Craig, talk a little bit about the bottle because the R&D that went into this bottle is just insane. Oh, yeah. Initially, there are two different designs of the bottle. One was a step like you see now, and the other one had a core or rod in the middle and then it placed acrylic discs on the top to form the bottle. Oh. So we chose not to go with that design just because that was a bottling nightmare. We didn't want to yeah. mix material, acrylic, and glass. Mm. So we finally were able to get 10,000 bottles out of a yield. It was perfect. We had a 20% disposal rate on it because 
of the mold that we had to perfect with that. And it took about a year to get this bottle right. And the glass stopper, yours is good. We had one on an Irish whiskey that we couldn't get it off that damn bottle to save oh, our lives. I'll give you a little hint. Like you said, this one is good. This one comes out relatively easy. Yeah. But on those glass stoppers, what you do is you use your thumbs like this and you push up on one edge and it pops up and then you can work it out. Uh, nice. Like nice. Good. Thank you for that. Pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> We're pro drinkers. We need pro openers. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one last thing we want to talk about, which is people are leery that it's blue. So we are using right now for this first run, we did a, a just a touch of blue food coloring. But we are also playing with butterfly pea blossoms, which provides a natural indigo color. And we're still working on it because it's tricky with the pH levels to get that color just right. Mm -hmm. But we, we're exploring that in R&D right now. Interesting. So that you won't have to use artificial coloring going forward. Yes. Yeah. We don't want to say artificial. It's natural food color, <laughs> but it doesn't detract from the quality of the liquid. Because our client base buys one to drink and one to put on the shelf of their bar and to hold as a collectible. So we know that butterfly people are in the current state does degrade over time. The color starts to fade. Oh. So we're working on a way to hold that color a little bit longer. However, when you add any sort of acidity to it, like tonic or fresh lime juice or anything of that nature, it goes from the dark indigo and it suddenly blossoms into this light purple, which is a stunning color, but it is also a great conversation starter. I think that's a great novelty for this. Yeah. I think it, it wouldn't hurt it at all. It's already blue. If it turns into purple, I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> I, know, I, I did another cocktail where I add some yellow chartreuse and some fresh lemon juice, and now you've got this beautiful shade of Romulan green. Yellow and green. Why not? <laughs> yeah. sure. How did you get the original bottle that you sent us? Well, it was hard to get the label approved. You know, yeah. the great thing about being a licensed for wine and spirits with Paramount is that we have direct access to the prop masters. John Van Sitter, who runs the whole Star Trek program and all the franchises such as Picard. So he puts us in touch with the creative people who created that logo. And then we digitally scan it. We have a 3D mold made. And then we send it over to China or Italy or Portugal, whatever facility can produce the complexity of the bottle. With regard to the TTB and putting the word ale on the label, we're calling it Romulan Rye, and that's what it says on the bottle, but we're marketing it as Romulan Ale. As long as we had the word whiskey on there and everything, that they were fine with it. They didn't give us any static. But for the nerds out there, an ale here on Earth, the maximum that a beer can get through natural fermentation is about 16%, at which point the yeast dies. But what we've determined is that on Romulus... <laughs> which is where they make Romulan ale. They have a much hardier strain of yeast that can for naturally ferment up to 50% alcohol by volume. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's right. I love it. It's great. And, and, uh, and what does it say? Romulan writing on the bottom. CTB did ask, and our sources says it doesn't translate into anything. Oh, okay. Um, it's, a, it's the prop guy. Gotcha. But fortunately, we did have a TTB agent who was a Star Trek fan. Oh, good. And he helped guide us through the process with some of the nitty gritty on the ale component and right. to make sure we were able to include it in the spirit. We're going to go with and, and take the liberty saying it translates to remarkably high quality, incredibly delicious by now. <laughs> <laughs> Going back a minute to what you said before, this is not your average novelty whiskey. This yeah. is not just something you buy for your Star Trek friend for Christmas. It could have been. You guys yeah. simply could have done that and made your life a lot easier. You know, source some just regular old stuff and, you know, good enough to drink. And you guys simply did, chose not to do that. Because uh, I think the flavor profile was very unique. I don't think Scott and I have tasted a lot of rides like this one. Yeah, so I, the higher proof and the vacuum yeah. distillation. That's my yeah. opinion. You know, yeah, and you, you can definitely tell that a lot of care was put into this. And the bottle. I mean, we know how hard it is to yeah. make that bottle. That bottle's a pain in the ass. I mean, and seriously. I, one of the things I used to do for Southern Glazers was to uh, help onboard new product. And when you're evaluating whether or not to take on a new product, you're not just evaluating the liquid, which is the primary concern, but the bottle, the label, the bath story, the grain, and ultimately the, the flavor profile, right? And the, of course, the price point. So you're really digging down deep. And thank you for noticing because somebody could look at it and turn their nose up and say, oh, it's blue whiskey, really? Uh, the yeah. quality, really quite exceptional. And I wouldn't have gotten involved with the project if it wasn't. Right. Craig Howard and the whole team over there, they're really very passionate about putting forward quality products. Awesome. Well, I think you answered all of the questions that we had. Ed, final questions for Craig or Brian? 
either one of you reach out whenever you got something to talk about. We're always looking to make connections in the industry and people who love what they do and we love what we do and we love what you do. So listen, the two of you make your way to Las Vegas. You can shoot an episode right here in my living room. Craig's been here, but the Property Brothers just renovated this for me. So they did, they did nice. my home. Uh, that'll be awesome. Oh, the Property we Brothers new, did. Yeah, nice. We have um, a new series called It's All Your Vault. And yeah. this could be all Brian's vault. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so what we do is we go to someone's house who has like 150, 200 bottle collections, 300 bottle collections. We go in there, pick out 15 whiskeys and usually Uber home. Craig, where are you based at again? I'm in Baltimore. Oh, Baltimore, <laughs> okay. You're two hours away, Craig. We could be there at 6 o'clock. Let's, let's go to <laughs> Phil's <Fels> place. <laughs> That's right. Like, once again, we get into April or something, Craig, we'll reach out. If we're going to go down to Old Line or something, we'll definitely hook up with you two. Oh, perfect. Make a night of it. And if you're ever in South Jersey or Philly, or even on your way to New York, you can stop here for a beverage on your way. Turnpike goes right through. Yeah, our office is right in Manhattan, so I cruise the Turnpike all the time. Right, so. we're exit <laughs> five, man. Just come on, come say hi. <laughs> Got it. Scott's exit four, actually. I'm makes it five but go to five five's more fun <laughs> gentlemen thank you for your time live long and prosper <laughs> <laughs> live long and prosper for sure all, all right, right guys, guys. All right, again. thanks so much well. bye-bye bye Hey everybody, it's Future Scott beaming into the past to say that between the recording and the publication of this podcast, Craig provided us with a discount code good for 10% off a bottle of Romulan rye or Romulan vodka. Just go to StarTrekSpirits.com and enter the code WhiskeyTangent1010 during checkout. I'll also put the code in the description of this episode. Or, wait, maybe I already did put it in the description? Well, whatever. Time travel is confusing. I better beam out of here before Pascott comes home and finds himself. That would be super awkward. Hey, what are you doing in my apartment? Who are you? Wait, why do you look like me? And why is all the Romulan rye gone? Uh, oops. Later. So I don't know. Uh, final thoughts. I mean, I think it's great. I, I would drink it again for sure. I, I would absolutely. Yeah. If they want to send us a bottle every two weeks, I think we'd have no problem. I'd walk <laughs> around with a blue tongue. Like, hey, Craig, Craig, you want to Craig, Craig, <laughs> Craig's like you greedy bastards. <laughs> <laughs> You've got your bottle. That's all you get. I mean, I, I will seek it out because yeah. I, I like it that. And obviously I like Star Trek. Yeah. Right. And no one would like this better on their shelf. Oh, no. Than you. You, need, oh. you need a bottle for this on your shelf. That's a mandatory. Absolutely. Sure. It's just a cool yeah. looking bottle. Yep. If we could get into their Rick house and beam their supply out, <laughs> <laughs> like just beam a barrel of it right here. <laughs> Blue tongues for the rest of the month. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Take us out. Yeah, so listen, if you have that friend who is a whiskey drinker and, and has a, a bottle of everything, he doesn't have this. No. Pick him up some Rhyme and Rye. And if he's a Star Trek fan or a, a fanatic like Jeff and really Scott is too, by all means, I will tell you right now, they're going to love it because the bottle's great. The blue color is amazing. But you know what? It's a damn good drinking whiskey, and that's the most important thing here on the Whiskey Tangent. Yeah. And so for the Whiskey Tangent, I'm Ed. I'm Scott. I'm Jeff. Cheers, everybody. Kapla. Julan True.